Ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. Today is the 1st of July at 6.30. We have a relatively late agenda tonight. We have a couple of appointments with the Chief of Police. Uh, we have some updates. Uh, we have some minutes to talk about. That could take the longest time right there, actually, minutes. Um, a couple of changes to, or, I'm sorry, excuse me, a recommendation for a couple of changes for building inspector alternate hourly pay rates and uh, then basically moving on to the summer. So, Chief, you have a police clerk appointment named April Griffin, and she might or might not be in this room. <laughs> Your Maybe. powers are amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, April is, is, was one of our seven interviews that we had. Uh, Shari, myself, and George were uh, made ourselves available after going through a mound of um, Applications like a lot of applications. Sixty-eight to oh, be wow. exact. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, uh, we cream had, always rises, doesn't it, Chief? What's that? Cream always rises. Always rises. It? Yes, definitely. Uh, so we we had the seven interviews um, and we went through and we we decided based on uh, the resumes and how the person conducted themselves in the interview, obviously, uh, and that's why we're here today with April. Uh, we think that she's going to be a great fit with the. Uh, police department and with the highway department uh, bringing her former business uh, aspect and uh, her current job now to uh, the town of Sunderland she, she is a resident has been a resident for 12 years mm -hmm. uh, and uh, part of the background checks people have spoken highly about was her, she so was she known by the Sunderland Police Department was not known by the Sunderland Police <laughs> so that's always, always good. a positive yep. yeah um, yeah <laughs> It <laughs> wasn't a, uh, a known person, so that's always on thing. file. That's yeah, funny. yeah, on file. Yeah. No familiarity. Not that we keep that. files on people. I don't want to yeah. think that. Like no misnomers there, exactly. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is this is April, and uh, we bring her as our uh, candidate tonight to uh, this fine board. Okay. Good evening, April. Good evening. Good evening. Questions of the board first. Um. Basically, Chief, uh, Police Clerk does a lot more than just take notes and uh, file paper at the... Yes, uh, the clerk has always been uh, instrumental in the department for just the, not just the firearms licensing and assistant with that, but the filing of all the equipment uh, from physical equipment to the police reports themselves, uh, being literally the face of the police department. When you walk in and, and you look at the window, you'll be able to be greeted by somebody instead of a, a blank stare by me for the past couple of months yeah. <laughs> or uh, by an empty window. Um, mm -hmm. I've been able to offer both of them uh, proudly and um, we're able to uh, uh, offer that to the town. I know there's a lot of people who have been commenting about how uh, it's been uh, kind of a ghost town in there, uh, but we're, we're happy to, to bring that to the department. Great. What's your normal hours for clerk chief? So the, the past clerk had uh, daytime hours, Monday through Friday. Uh, we're still gonna sit down and figure it out so we can get it on the website, but it's gonna be 99% uh, chance gonna be daytime, um, no earlier than seven and no later than five, Monday through Friday, or some variation of that. Okay. Holidays, not in weekends, yeah. But like normal business hours. Normal business those. hours, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's gonna be 34 hours split between both agencies, so we have to kind of peg it in uh, so some days may be less, some days may be more. Right. Okay. Almost that, Mr. Chair. Do you have any other questions? No, I'm good. Sherry, any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is an appointment. It's an annual appointment. And we're going to be starting effective today. today. That's right. Like, spot How do you on. do that? Yeah. Like, that's that's, that's, that's Perfect timing. timing. <laughs> like, really on for today. So uh, is there a motion to uh, appoint uh, April Griffin as the police uh, clerk as well as Highway shared uh, for the current appointment schedule. Motion. Second. You have a motion made and second. You, bear, you know that this happens once a year, right? Once a year, the appointment schedule comes around and it goes through yeah. the appointment process. Okay, great. You didn't sign hope, a 10 year deal. for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the chief does also. Yes. Uh, so we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor of the appointment signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Three to zero, and thanks so much for uh, all you've done and Thank coming you. to do. Thanks, congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice Thank you, nice to meet you too. I see you in a professional Thank sense. Thank you, yes. Yeah. Welcome. You I so always much. say that with police appointments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Every single Qualified. one, time officer or not. It's like, yeah. For the same in a professional sense. Professional sense, yes. Uh, Chief, you also have uh, Jordan Zukowski. 
Yes, so about uh, a, a lot of you may re remember Jordan. He has worked here in the past. Uh, about 12 months and two weeks ago, he left to go to Greenfield full-time, uh, full-time police department. Uh, that did not work out for him, uh, and he came back to us uh, the past 30 days mm -hmm. asking if, well, less than 30 days, asking if we would be interested uh, in, in having him come back. So we looked into to, uh, everything that he has done with them. Nothing has come up in a, in a negative light. Okay. Uh, no one in the department has spoken uh, ill or never really, you know, didn't work well with him. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of positive feedback from the um, from the sergeant and the other officers. So we're looking at uh, bringing him back on as a part-time officer, uh, doing shifts, doing calls, everything else. He would have to do a small amount of FTO because mm -hmm. we have updated some of the computer systems okay. with the regional dispatch system. And he was in, he was kind of on the way out when that was coming in. Right, right. So he'll just get him up to it's, speed. It's, yeah, it's the the same uh, nuts and bolts that we had. It's just a different way of getting there. Got it. Uh, so he'll log in and, and learn that process uh, as long as he gets appointed, and he would uh, pick up his normal uh, shifts that he normally took uh, as he did in the past. Okay. And so, Chief, if I could, this is uh, an even head count at the department, or is this an additional part-timer? So, as you know, uh, we have an officer that is uh, I'm reading that time. Right yep. Yeah. So this would be a, a swap one for one. Got it. Um, uh, and it would ma basically level us <clears> off <throat> again. Okay. Uh, it would be nice to try to have two part-time officers for every full-timer, but yep. we've never really, in the three years I've been here, we haven't really get to that point yet. Right because we had such of a revolving door. Um, he was one of them, Sure. Uh, but he's, he's asked to come back and uh, uh, he expressed his interest for Sunderland because of how much he enjoyed the town and, and the staff he worked with. So okay. yeah, it would be an even, that's my short answer, yeah. I guess. No, that's okay. You guys know I never give short answers. <laughs> that's what Sherry was saying. <laughs> sure. Tom? Um, I, I know places I've worked in the past, um, when I worked with mobile in particular, they used to like people on the second time around because that person, um, when you're hired, there's no illusions as what they're getting into. Yeah, smart. So, yep. so at that time, there's a lot with a job with a lot of travel and such. So, it's and it was a long travel, um, Madagascar travel. <laughs> so, and then you'd be on the ship for t you know two months at a time. So. They live, you know. So when you live that life, they they wouldn't they would hire people that came back easily. So I have absolutely no problem because if if he left in good standing with the department, he left in good standing with yourself, chief, um, and he knows what to expect. I, I it's a lot easier yeah. all the way around. I think it will be. Um, and then also he's familiar with the community. And I think that's a very important part also. So, Great. Mr. Chair, I'm fine with that. David, I think? No, all set. If I yeah. could, could pile on to <clears throat> Tom's comments, people oftentimes will, will take a position for whatever circumstance there is, they'll, they'll go out, and then there is a certain, um, how do I put it, how do I put it best? There is a certain calm when someone comes back it's like, oh, okay, from both sets of perspectives. You know, what you're, as an employer, the quality of the staff that you're, is returning, and for whatever reasons that return ends up being a, a much easier fit, yes. as you say. It, it, you know exactly what you're getting in that sense. Okay, so with that, any, any more discussion? Uh, this is uh, Jordan Zukowski, and this is gonna be for this appointment year that's gonna be our fiscal 20. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Motion. Oops, sorry. Motion, motion. Yeah. sorry. Second. Your motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay, Chief. Last one uh, with it kind of in your area of the sphere of influence is actually the retirement. We have uh, David Devin Melnick retiring, and that's simply coming off our appointment list. Yes. So Devin uh, has been here for, not to show his age, but 30 plus years. Nice. Even, yeah, 30 plus years. Um, he's he started very young. Um, He's been yeah, what, through, about 10? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Undercover, uh, undercover work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's been it for a while. He's been through more chiefs than uh, a lot of us ever have. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know he was part of the uh, an initial hiring committee uh, that I was uh, mm -hmm. so graciously uh, added to. 
so uh, he's uh, a, a face that everyone knows and, and everyone at the department get, gets along with him. Uh, it's just uh, getting to a point where he's you know, done his time and he's, yeah. he's thankful for that and we're going to miss him. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's retiring. So, so it's unfortunate that he's going, but I'm, I'm happy that he's going to be able to do more things and uh, enjoy the time. Wonderful. Okay, we have a notice for retirement. Is a discussion? Uh, no. Nope. That's our motion. Uh, motion, and with thanks for his service. Definitely. Second? Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, can't retire. Can't retire. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't, say, he didn't realize ago. it was a lifetime it's appointment. Second. Right, that's what I, I, yeah. I tried telling him. That. Yeah. Didn't I go second. All those in favor. All right. And, and uh, if we could send a letter to... Officer Melnick as well about his recent <clears throat> service and, and you know a photo of each of the chiefs he's outlasted. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> as, as a form of a dartboard or is it? No, 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 no. I'm just yeah. asking. Sure, it's, it's like like baseball trading cards. Yeah, yeah. I have him. I have him. Yeah, I give it to him for. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they do with it when they get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to make spot visits to make sure I don't have any holes. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Chief, any, any since you since you were you're here and uh, you have the camera, anything you want to say, mention, or other about uh, public safety while we've got you? I mean, you're you're pretty shy, so I, I am, and I, I hate uh, the the spotlight. No, I honestly the uh, the public has been great about notifying us mm -hmm. uh, of anything that comes up, and I really uh, hope that that continues. They're they're using the dispatch center more mm -hmm. than. Um, then a couple of months ago, even four, four, four months ago, okay. they were leaving messages and, and they're, they're realizing, okay, I can't leave a message on a Friday because not everyone checks that phone or yep. if they should leave a message on my phone or whatever. So they're using dispatch more. Uh, if they're seeing things, they're reporting it. And that, uh, it's, it's odd to say it, it warms my heart, but I'm happy that it's happening sure. because they're getting the police response that they deserve. And, and we yep. hopefully that continues. Good. Great. Thanks so much, and thanks for all you do, Chief. And uh, welcome aboard, uh, uh, Ms. Griffin. Thank you. I look forward to maybe a, a reappointment in about, I don't know, 11 months. we got to hear a word from these guys. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Chief. Any other uh, comments from the Chief? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Well, come on. So we've got minutes from 1719, 61719, mm -hmm. the last time we met. We had uh, Megan Rhodes from the Cog in. We had some Wild Roots discussion. Sure, did, um, did that license discussion with the folks from uh, Wild Roots get closed out? Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And that was Tom, to your, your point about business and kind of thinking beyond the individual permit, I was, I think, constructive for the business owner as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so good. Kitchen Gardens, One Day Liquor, and then some signage. And then our updates. Okay. Any questions about the minutes? Uh, no. Second. Like motion made and second to approve the minutes of 61719. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, jump down to the building inspector's alter building inspector alternates hourly rate of pay. Now we have a recommendation that was set forward from the building inspector. About uh, getting to thirty-eight dollars an hour for the alternate, Sherry. Right. And in the it's per inspection. It's usually a minimum of one hour. Sometimes it. it it takes a little longer, but it's a flat rate, thirty-eight dollars okay. per inspection. Okay. And our fee structure, the way it's covered, our way it's structured, will cover those costs. Correct. Okay. And again, these are just the alternates. Any questions, uh, gentlemen? All set? No. Okay. All those in favor of taking the inspector's recommendation for $38 an hour for alternates? This is vacation and sick and et cetera. So, um, is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero. Okay, we got Mr. Melnick already. And town administrator updates. How was, how was the cruise? Just it, was good. <laughs> it was good. It was really warm, but other than that, it was very good. I just following up on the um, ADA plan that we submitted. Yeah. There's just a couple more pieces that we need to do to be eligible to apply for the grant round that's coming up in August. And so, um, one of the requirements is that we have a grievance procedure. And the other is a notice of uh, non-discrimination that we post on our website so people 
yes. um, have that information if uh, they need it. And those were two of the areas that were simply administrative uh, that uh, Ms. Rhodes from the COG said it's an important piece. It's purely administrative. There's a process. Yeah. You know, don't reinvent the wheel. We have to post the non-discrimination policy. Yeah. I used the one from the state. Yeah. And the same with the publication for the uh, grievance procedure. Okay. And the other piece is designation of a responsible employee, and I serve as the ADA coordinator. Do um, you think that's a natural grouping there? Sure. Yeah. And make another, another tag to the hat, right? So we can have that in a format under policy. The board can vote yeah. on it. We can put date and mm -hmm. amend it. You have it in your books now. So if you accept it, I'll submit it, and uh, we'll be all set. Um, to apply on August 1st. And this is taken from other uh, either state guidance or other Yeah, from the guidance. Mass Office on Disability. Right. So mm -hmm. we don't have to deal with having legal no. counsel review this. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Great. Great. Okay, questions? No. Do you want a motion for acceptance of the policy? The policy, yeah. yeah. Motion. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Right. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, so that's one administrative step under the ADA uh, peer review. That was a suggestion. So we also get to check the box because we got something done. That's right. right. <laughs> that's it's a good, good thing to check to boxes. Show progress, right? That's right. Any other updates, Sherry? Uh, just one. Uh, we received a recommendation this morning. I don't know if you saw the email um, to form a town center committee, um, which kind of came about, I think, from the roundabout discussion that mm. um, perhaps the board might consider forming a committee um, mm. to look at options and alternatives and impact and mm -hmm. yep so whenever we've created working groups committees or other in the past we've given a charge and a life cycle and mm -hmm. etc right. i think it would make sense to over the next couple of meetings understanding that this is a there are a series of strategic components in and around the town center air quotes um because we know we have north main likely happening yep. um we know that there continues to be progress at 120 for senior housing. We know the state's looking at the intersection. intersection yep. uh, we know that we have already executed uh, complete streets on South Main. We want to do the other side, perhaps, right. under the next right. So uh, I appreciate the fact that there is interest in keeping some, that there's an interest in the, in the community for community yeah. input. And there are a handful of pieces that if you put them together in the wrong kind of way, the puzzle looks a bit ugly. Right. Right. It's good so to coordinate. It coordinate. All. But we also have the ADA grant and here that was in the design street. phase. So great point. Yeah. And tying a, complete streets in with the North Main Street project will be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. To sync all that up. Tom, you have thoughts? Yeah. Well, uh, and a couple. You, you, we talked about uh, complete streets. Mm -hmm. um, I talked. Was talking with Sherry earlier tonight about. Um, the continuation of the sidewalks down to um, uh, Sugarloaf, um, Sugarloaf Estates. Yep. Yep. And Sherry says we're still waiting for the... Um, Sugarloaf easement, sidewalk easement. Yep. Now, my, my personal thing is that we have until October to get it done or we lose a grant round. Good point. Mm -hmm. So what I'd, I'd like Sherry to do is if possible talk to the sugarloaf people mm -hmm. and say okay who do we need to talk to right. at your bank if it if the bank is the problem right who do we need to talk to the bank and sure. i would like either the chair or one of us to talk to the bank sure talk and tell them look we're, we're trying we're, we're trying to stay in the queue for grants we yep. were started it's a good opportunity for us this is a betterment to the to sugarloaf yeah and exactly. safety of the yep. people that are standing there mm -hmm. um and, and so I'd like either one of us to talk to them. Um, and if we can't make any headway, I, I'd want to go the eminent domain sure. process. And again, they don't have a, the management of Sugar Oak doesn't have a problem with it, right. but we need to make it happen. Okay. Yeah, the lawyers are talking. 
right now. So that seems to yeah. be where we're and, and, and lawyers get paid by the hour. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. In October by the hour isn't that far away. No. Yeah, we're yeah. Gen five. Genuinely not that far not away. No. Time so but I, I, I think we should we should try to move on it as as soon okay. as possible. Also for the committee, um, I, I would like to charge the committee because I think there's people that may not live in the center mm -hmm. that would be interested to be on the committee as also. Good point. I think that there's, would, pe yeah. there's people that own businesses and that may run businesses that come through mm -hmm. the intersection that would be very interested also right. in contributing to, to, in to and contribute portions to the conversation. Smart. So. I think you, you should make sure you don't have people from the center on there, or like to some extent, you know, you need a mix. Well, I, I, I'd like to see, I, I'd like to understand what the outcome of that committee would be. Right. What's its goal? Right. Yep. Well, that's the best part about being the appointing authority. Yeah. Because we can set the goal at the that's timeline. That's true. That's true. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm, well but I'm, I'm just concerned yep. about, you, you have to have a realistic goal. Yeah. And, and, and again, my, my concern the other day was that I don't, I don't, I know roundabouts can work, mm -hmm. but I'm not a civil. And I don't know what the traffic tallies are that make roundabouts work or not. Mm -hmm. So you can go into a meeting and say, well, we want a roundabout, and it sounds like a great idea. And, and I, I actually have stories where it has worked. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it'll work here. Right. And it's it, it'd be interesting. And and again, I think the planning board should have a say. Mm -hmm. You know, should seat at the table. I mean, they're they, they get elected for for creating a vision for the community. That's a really good point. Well, it's really so, part of our master plan when you get back when you get down to it. You know, it's all all part you're of you're that. Absolutely right. There. So again, so I I don't I, I before we commit create a committee, I'd like to have a full understanding of what, what we're trying to sure. accomplish. Yeah. So Makes maybe sense. for our next two meetings, right, because we, we're every other now, our next two meetings we could start with a straw man. Suggestions mm -hmm. from suggestions from the, from the public or, as well as our own input, yeah. uh, and then have a charge framework <clears throat> that's not voted by the board, but something that's the discussion point for people who are interested in that. Yeah. And then by August, two meetings we're in August already, by September 1st, we can have, if, if this really comes to, if this, we, if it's decided this is a true need, A, and, and get B, rolling. you can get that charge set up for early September. Yeah. Yep. We're only talking about well, I would, four I would meetings say, between now and September. I, I, would, I would say, I also would say, I don't think the state's gonna do anything at the center. No. Our intersection of 47 and 116 without public hearing and Correct. public input. No, absolutely. And it won't be right. in the next year either. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, okay. good, good point, Sam. So, over the next couple of meetings, we'll have a framework for a charge and a framework for a timeline. So, it's on a perpetual committee and then, uh, or working group. And then, um, last, lastly, uh, inside that framework and that timeline, a composition, so it's not a, it's an, it's an inclusive to interested parties, but also people, as you mentioned before, uh, like on the planning board that may or may not uh, have a direct impact on it yeah. in their committee work. Because right. yeah. it affects not just the people who live right along there, yeah. but the it's whole everybody. town. Yep. Great and attention. actually the people all around us, really. So. Okay, that's great. Appreciate the dialogue there. Uh, select board updates. I'm sorry, anything else? Nope, that's it. Select board updates. Um, the only update I have right now, we did uh, we did have a personnel committee meeting scheduled, but we didn't have a quorum, so we're going to reschedule that. And then uh, <clears throat> I'm going to schedule a, another ditch committee meeting soon because I know George is kind of tied up, and we wanted to we wanted our right now. I know yeah. we wanted our next one to be all about fun with culverts, but we'll have to postpone that one, I think, and start moving on to the other stuff. So great, thanks, David. Tom, anything? Um, Saturday, last this past Saturday, uh, Congressman McGovern was here, and this we had a full house. I mean, we had yes. more. Mm -hmm. We had a. We were bringing in chairs from all over to stack in this place, and uh, it was it was a pretty interesting conversation. And you, you know, 
I, it it you you can disagree. It was it was interesting because there was a lot of a lot of comments about a lot of different uh, points, um, and uh, Congressman McGovern um, was pretty. Um, um, he, he 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 handled every question that was sent to him. Uh, I thought very well. Um, I don't know if I always agreed, but again, uh, that was a part of his thing. And, and the bot bottom line it, with the congressman, uh, and, and I've actually seen the congressman out and about doing things in this area not being publicized mm -hmm. just because he does um, good things because he does good things and he doesn't need the um, the press to be there yeah. and and that's all that's always impressed me about him is that he when he he does he does a lot of things and you don't have the uh, uh, newspaper reporter photographer following him behind and and I thought it was a, a wonderful opportunity um, to listen and and he was talking about how he gets his coffee at a local Dunkin' Donuts in Worcester, and <laughs> and um, there's that always that group of people that are always there every day, and they have basically opinions on everything, and and he talked and about um, the importance of having dialogue, even if you disagree, mm -hmm. and I I I will second that 100 million percent is that it's important to have dialogue. It's important to explore ideas, um, and and I thought one of the things that he said <coughs> that was very well, um, and sometimes we miss. But if you hear things that are factually not true, don't be afraid to to say, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. Sure. And and you know we we learned stuff. We he was talking about there was many questions about immigration along the border. Mm -hmm. And there was, he was he was telling us stuff about what our laws, and and basically going back to Ronald Reagan and right through Obama and 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 um, um, Clinton and uh, the Bushes that our politicians have just chose to ignore, mm -hmm. to Republicans and Democrats. So it's not it's not um, a one sided thing. It's just. And and I I did I had no idea, and and he was talking about that, and and it, it kind of makes you step aside and go, we should know I should have known that sure, because yeah, it would help with the conversation. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and I I just think that uh, so it was interesting. Um, it was it was an hour. He started at ten thirty and was done, done by well I know he stopped at noon. I don't know what time he actually ended up going out that door. <laughs> Because there was a bunch of people grabbing him, stage. but um, I, I, I would. It was a, a wonderful opportunity um, to talk with a national legislator. That's the chairman of the rules committee, which is a pretty powerful position. So that's yeah. how stuff gets to the floor. Mm -hmm. and, and it was kind. Of, somebody, somebody was asking a question about I'm about I'm bills, I'm and he says, "Well, I'm the chair of the rules." Right. right. <laughs> and it's like. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's a committee that most people don't know anything about, and you're yeah. just sitting there and go, "Yeah, if you, yeah, if it, if you want it, appropriations and rules, got to get to the floor. Gotta get, gotta go through yeah. them." So just um, the bill on it, was, it, was, it was interesting our conversation. Okay. Um, I kind of wish it was televised, but kind of just because I just know. To, well, no, <laughs> not against uh, FCAT uh, or anything, not you, just but it, but I just thought it was interesting the questions that were asked. You know, there was question, there was a, a bunch of. And and you know there there was questions about holistic medicine, mm -hmm. you know about the that that there's different ways to do things besides popping Big pills yep. and surgery, yep. and, it, and there was questions about um, elders. Yep. Uh, there was questions about um, the immigration, uh, of course, but I I just thought there was there's a wide and understand a congressman can be you can. And, and he answered all the questions, you know. And there's people that were supporting particular bills. Sure. And if he didn't know, he was making notes himself. So that was pretty good. It was interesting. That's good stuff. 
and to uh, Congressman McGovern and the people who orchestrated getting them to come to Sunderland. We could love to make that an annual event. Yeah, well, he was in Greenfield earlier. Yeah. Um, and like I it's said, it's a big it's district. A lot of people lose sight of that fact. Mm -hmm. It's not South it's Dakota, true. but it's a big district. Right. For our state, it is. It, it's not South Dakota, but it's a big, you are absolutely right, Scott. It's a big district. And, and again, we're lucky that um, you there was an opportunity that he would come. And it's called Coffee with a Congressman. Yeah. It's on his uh, Facebook page. Yeah. So if you're interested, just, I mean, he does it quite regularly around the district, his district. So just go on his Facebook page and, and you will. Uh, or contact his office and he'll give you the schedule. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have a Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team meeting. Hang on. <clears throat> that was a frog. Yeah. Um, that is uh, set up for uh, the 8th. I think that's next Monday. Uh, that's going to be here. We're gonna revisiting what has been accomplished and where we're currently at and uh, where I'm going forward. Uh, and then I'm working with Sherry to put together a capital planning committee meeting in the next couple of weeks, maybe next week, um, depends on everybody's schedule, uh, specific to integrating the uh, building survey to our capital plan, or, and then now the integration of the Frontier Union 38 capital components so we end up with one plan not two plans for the town of like Sunderland. a master yeah one master plan yeah. and that'll be the, the sole agenda item uh, that uh, maybe checking in on a couple of the pieces that are, are grant driven that are nearing completion uh, we have in front of us uh, the 4th of July coming up uh, that's a couple days away if anyone is interested there is uh, and this may be a little far field, but there is at the city of Boston's uh, Dorchester office of their library uh, for reading on the 4th of July, one of 14 original copies of the Declaration of, I'm sorry, of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Comes out uh, once a year. It always makes me cry a little bit. Neat, neat. Nice to see those in actual. We have a July 13th Riverside, Sunderland Riverside Park opening ceremony. Music, fun, frivolities, no rain. Just like Neil Young said, no rain. No rain. Yeah. And yeah. our next meeting is going to be on uh, July 15th. And that is going to be here. Same bat time and same bat channel. We have an appointment uh, request to appoint Liz Foster at the Sunderland Council of Aging. Is there a motion? Uh, motion. Second. Liz does great work with uh, seniors uh, and is just a wonderful, wonderful person. So thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. Um, motion made seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. We're also, Mr. Chair, we're also still looking for others that may be interested in the Council of Aging um, and in particular uh, what we're looking for or forward to doing also is working with the other two town and oh, yeah. planning and planning um, our senior center and and how it should where how where what when the next five ten fifteen years so you know Tom as you raise that um, I'm reminded that if we are continuing uh, to move forward with senior housing at 120 North Main that the Council of Aging as well as the Senior Center's relationship with the town can only be enhanced. Hmm. We'll have not just seniors living in individual homes, but we'll have seniors and invariably what happens is a community develops. Yep. And so they're housed together and that community is enhanced. And One of the things that I'm looking forward to, Scott, is that in the Senior Center, they the RDI in their in their uh, mm -hmm. presentation, they're gonna they're gonna have activity rooms okay. and pickleball courts and mm -hmm. and, and it'll finally start. And I actually think by having the senior center and and or or the senior housing, housing right. what'll happen is that'll be a spur hopefully to make more th better 
things happen, like transportation. Yeah. Now right. have now have a, a an area for to go to. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and and we can draw people in, and and that's one of the things I would hope with the uh, with our senior center director, and we've talked to about in the past, is that is a senior center director not just for that one building but for the three town right. and we we have um, um, outreach coordinator now um, and, and I also think in the the senior center director we were trying to get that position to branch more out into the communities and set up satellites you know in the communities right. themselves because right, right. some people may it may be difficult for them to travel right. or or we don't have the method yet to get people from point A to point B, so we're going to try to work on that. That reinforces the, the, the point of us, the thought yeah, of us absolutely. came to me. It's like we're not quite centralizing, but certainly creating a concentration of, mm -hmm. of where uh, senior and senior activities and senior needs can be addressed as opposed to 38 individual homes or 16 individual homes. Absolutely. And, and it, I agree. It's, it's a really good piece of feedback there. Yep. Okay. Any discussion? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.